The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good morning and good afternoon, and welcome to today's webinar, Reduced Fraud Risk, introduced by Same Day ACH. My name is Alexa Sevilla, and I'm the Director of Digital Marketing at Guardian Analytics, and I will be your moderator for today. This webinar will be recorded and available to you after the presentation. We will answer questions as time permits. Please use the question and answer feature in the GoToWebinar panel to submit questions. With that, I'm happy to introduce our presenter, Luis Rojas, Vice President of Product Management here at Guardian Analytics. Luis, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alexa. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to talk to you about this important and timely topic. Um, so what I would like to do is uh, take a minute to walk you through uh, some background information on Guardian Analytics for those of you that may not be familiar with our organization. Uh, so Guardian Analytics is one of the pioneers in behavioral analytics and machine learning. And uh, currently we protect over 40 million accounts from uh, account takeover and identity theft. Uh, when you look at our, our mix of customers, we have over 420 financial institutions uh, and these range in size from anywhere from uh, 100 million in assets to over 650 billion in assets. Uh, so it really spans the gamut of financial institutions, uh, primarily in North America. Uh, this um, covers about 40 million accounts, both uh, commercial banking and retail banking, and approximately 5 billion transactions uh, of all types across multiple banking platforms and, and payment hubs. What we're going to focus on today is what are the factors that are driving institutions to look at uh, providing real-time ACH fraud prevention uh, to protect their customers. Um, the um, the same-day ACH initiative is bringing a lot of opportunity uh, both to, to for banks to grow their business, but it also introduces some uh, implications for fraud. Uh, uh, invariably, uh, anytime you move after payments, their fraudsters, uh, this gets their attention and they try to leverage vulnerabilities that they can exploit uh, because of the reduced time available for uh, fraud investigations and verification of transactions. Uh, so we have introduced uh, uh, two products, um, Guardian Analytics uh, ACH ODFI real-time and uh, ACH RDFI real-time in order to help uh, mitigate the risk associated with this. We'll be taking a look at a product demo, uh, and then uh, we'll just summarize some of the benefits that we see accruing to financial institutions leveraging this type of uh, technology and infrastructure. And then we'll take uh, a number of different uh, questions from, uh, from the audience. So when we talk to uh, financial institutions about why why same day ACH? Why would you adopt a real time ACH fraud prevention strategy? Um, the, the, uh, generally, this, the responses fall into two camps. There are those types of organizations that primarily just want to achieve regulatory compliance um, and they want to check that box off. Um, and then there are uh, other institutions that are more visionary or forward-looking that are actually looking at this as an opportunity to grow their business and grow the top line and also future-proof themselves because uh, same-day ACH is one point along a continuum of moving to faster payments. Uh, that's, that's always an imperative uh, that our uh, industry is moving forward uh, and uh, you see it evidenced uh, not just by the the NACHA regulation for same-day ACH, but also initiatives, uh, for example, the Fed Payments Initiative for uh, streamlining uh, vendor payments uh, when it comes to invoicing and uh, pay, paying those invoices electronically. Uh, you also have uh, electronic, the Faster uh, Payments uh, Task Force, uh, which has also been exploring uh, all kinds of ways of accelerating payments across multiple rails. Uh, naturally, everyone wants to prevent loss. Um, nobody wants to see the name of their institution splashed across headlines. Uh, there's um, the brand erosion that 
results from that, opportunity loss, customer churn, et cetera. Uh, and then while they want to offer uh, accelerated payments and they want to attract bigger and better customers, they want to reduce their exposure. They want to reduce their uh, risk envelope. Uh, so those, those are some key themes that have come out of a number of different conversations that we've had with our customer base and uh, prospects. Uh, as you know, um, the first phase of uh, same day ACH is nearly upon us. Uh, September 23rd, it goes into effect, uh, and that's um, essentially for credits only, primarily for uh, inbound ACH uh, transactions. Uh, and uh, uh, there's um, two cutoffs that are um, uh, recommended in the in the guidance, um, and also uh, faster um, uh, settlement. Uh, it's focused primarily on uh, ACH credits, but then the follow-on phases um, about a year later and on September 15th of 2017 will focus on uh, credits and debits. And uh, even though this particular phase is, is more relevant to uh, receiving organizations, uh, originating organizations are not waiting until then. They're, they're actually being proactive now because uh, they, they want to uh, use this compelling event again to uh, uh, future-proof themselves and not have to be in a reactionary mode, but rac rather proactively uh, see what they need to do to improve their payments infrastructure. So some of the implications that we see emerging from same-day ACH. Uh, when, when the UK moved to faster payments uh, a few years ago, we saw that there was a sharp increase in cybercrime uh, and it was directly correlated to the shorter processing windows. Uh, there was uh, reduced time for investigations. It also increased in volume, so it, it attracted uh, more originators and higher volumes of transactions. We, we've always uh, seen that processors take advantage of, of these situations. For example, they time uh, their money movement transactions to happen during times of peak volume when uh, there's the most stress put on the on the staff of the financial organization uh, to meet cutoffs. Um, so they try to uh, time, time these uh, transactions so that they happen right up against their cutoff window. Uh, and also they will break up uh, large transactions into multiple transactions hoping that some will get through. Uh, and and then, uh, you know, if, if, if it can get through and settle faster, uh, so much the better as far as the processors are concerned. Now, uh, out of the 420 plus institutions that we um, that we support today, approximately 140 of those are using our standard ACH products. But today we offer a, a ACH ODFI and R RDFI solution. And out of the um, five billion transactions or so that we support today, uh, that we process today. Approximately one fifth of those are ACH uh, transactions. We have uh, a number of our customers that are in the top 50 originators and receivers in the United States. Um, we'll talk more about this um, in a minute, but uh, it is a very easy transition to go from standard ACH processing to real time ACH processing um, so that uh, there's no uh, radical changes in infrastructure uh, required in order to process. Uh, the files on a continuous basis. When we talk to uh, some of the financial institutions that are more visionary, this is an example of a business case that one of our key customers shared with us. Uh, they're an organization that is on the East Coast. Uh, they uh, approximately $25 billion in assets, uh, and they do approximately 3 million uh, originated transactions every year. And uh, when we asked them about uh, why are you considering uh, same day ACH, what are some of the motivators uh, that you're looking for, is they see this as an opportunity to, uh, to grow their business. They want to uh, attract bigger and better customers, more profitable customers. Uh, they're, they have a very healthy commercial business, so uh, they want to be able to uh, at attract uh, those commercial accounts they want to offer uh, accelerated payments. They want to reduce the friction uh, in, in the customer experience, so uh, uh, minimize or elim eliminate 
uh, things like callbacks and uh, you know hard tokens or anything that uh, is seen and perceived by the customer as an inconvenience or a barrier to doing business. So this is a way for them to uh, acquire more customers, grow their revenue, differentiate themselves from their competition, uh, and then uh, they also recognize that you know failure to um, adopt some of these accelerated payments could result in some customer churn, particularly if the comp competitors are offering some of these more expedited payments, it could attract some of their existing customer base and erode uh, their customer base and uh, turn into churn for them. When we look at the uh, workflow and data flow that we offer, um, this is the, uh, a high level overview of what is going on in the outbound data flow in a real-time processing environment. So uh, as the bank's customers originate transactions through various channels, for, existence, for instance, uh, online banking, corporate treasury management, uh, payment systems like payroll processors, um, those all flow into the organization. And the uh, aggregated NACHA files containing multiple uh, originators can be put in temporary storage, uh, primarily on disk while they're transmitted to Guardian Analytics Data Center. This can be a push from the organization to us, or it can be a pull where uh, we have a process that can log in and continuously pull files from, from the organization. Uh, now, the files are processed immediately upon receipt, and this can be a continuous stream of files. Rather than doing, uh, for example, uh, you know, two times a day or four times a day, it can be on a continuous basis as frequently as you know, every five minutes, every 10 minutes, however uh, quickly the bank decides that they want to uh, uh, deposit the files in the temporary location and have, the, have us pull it or uh, have the, them push it to us. Uh, the files are processed in parallel and we will then uh, score the files on the fly. So there's a real-time uh, score that is generated and it's written to a file that is then transmitted back to uh, the institution. This is a, a uh, structured file that then is, is parsed upon receipt here. We have a solution that will then split the files into two sets. Uh, the ones that are considered to be high risk because of the behavioral analysis that we did uh, on the uh, transactions themselves will be uh, essentially kept in, in an auto hold state here in the temporary uh, location. The ones that are deemed to be uh, low risk or very consistent with pre-established uh, behavior for the originators or beneficiaries will then uh, be routed to a an accepted directory from which then they're processed into the core or through their payment hubs and eventually sent for payments. Now, for those that resulted in a auto hold uh, directive, so they're being held in quarantine here, those scores are immediately visible to fraud analysts at the institution in our visual analytics product, which you'll see a demonstration in a few minutes. So the analysts will conduct their investigation, and then based on the results of their investigation, they will then mark uh, those auto-held uh, batches to be either re uh, accepted or rejected. So in the next batch of file that comes over, uh, let's say 10 minutes later, five minutes later, then those manually disposition batches will be included in there. And then the ones that were rejected will flow into a rejected or exception directory, um, which means that they will not be processed by the court. They will not be submitted for payment. But the ones that were manually released will then also flow into the accepted location. And they're included in with the ones that were automatically dispositioned uh, during that uh, particular phase of uh, scoring. So the bank then can return the rejected uh, ACH batches back to the originators and ask them to uh, uh, remove uh, the high risk batch entries and resubmit the, you know, rebalance the batch and resubmit it. Uh, or they can just simply uh, tell them that, you know, that uh, they're too risky to process and that they need to conduct some investigation on their side, on the originator side. So this is the outbound uh, data flow. And as I mentioned, this, this can happen throughout the day on a continuous basis, as the files get generated, uh, they don't have to be uh, batched um, to a certain size or in a particular uh, cadence. On the receiving side, it's a very similar uh, process. As the uh, 
as the files are received from the Fed or the ACH network, uh, they are routed to the receiving organization, and before they are posted to the core, they are put in a temporary storage, and then uh, the NACHA files are sent to us where we process the files and score them, and again, we return an automatic uh, risk score, which is a directive that says, please hold them or go ahead and accept them. If they're accepted, then they're routed to the core and they're uh, processed for posting, uh, whether they're credits or debits. Um, then, based on the results of the um, inspection of those that were were held, which is a, a small percentage of the overall volume, uh, then those are routed to the rejected uh, uh, ACH directory, and then from there the originating organization is notified that those will not be uh, processed because they were uh, uh, high risk. So at this point what I would like to do is I'd like to kind of show you uh, an example of the uh, fraud analyst experience as they triage the alerts for uh, these ACH batches. Now, in this, uh, I'm uh, logged into uh, the real-time ACH visual analytics application. This is a uh, web browser application that the uh, fraud analyst uh, at the institution uses to log in and look at the alerts on a daily basis. Uh, this particular customer has both uh, our ODFI and our RDFI product deployed, and they're focused on ODFI uh, for this particular investigation, and uh, they can look at today's alerts, or they can look at, uh, a rel you know, uh, for instance, uh, two days uh, to cover the weekend or four days. They can also uh, go back in time and look at uh, a specific interval in time. They filter by risk level, and and then as a fraud analyst, I can also uh, look at the ones that are uh, alerts that are not viewed or that have open cases on them. Uh, in this particular view, what I see is uh, that each row here represents an ACH batch, and they're uh, stack ranked in the order of descending risk, uh, with uh, color coding for red alerts being the highest level risk and then uh, proceeding on to yellow alerts, medium risk, and then even continuing beyond that uh, to be uh, uh, lower levels of, of, of risk. Uh, so I can continue to paginate through here and, and work through the entire list. But uh, at, um, as I'm conducting my investigations, I can sort these by a variety of uh, different uh, columns. I can uh, also scroll along to see different attributes of the batch. One of the most important columns here is this intervention status column, which tells me which, uh, which batches have been held and are currently in the quarantine queue, which ones were previously held but then were manually accepted or rejected, um, and then which ones were auto-accepted because uh, they were, uh, uh, again, uh, deemed to be uh, uh, low risk enough that they could be processed. Uh, as I scroll over to the uh, to the right, I can see additional columns here that give me more context and information. And we've added this column here for an a same day ACH indicator. So this tells me that I can prioritize my investigations to focus on those batches that, uh, that were flagged the same day ACH processing. So you can create a filter view just for those, um, or you can uh, you know, structure your investigation uh, in a way that, that fits your operational parameters. So in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, select uh, a batch, uh, and then I'm going to click on the accounts detail to get a little bit closer look at that. And now I'm looking at everything for this company, uh, uh, and I can zero in on a particular alert to uh, get more details on it. In this uh, view, uh, <clears throat> this indicates all of the batches that have been processed for this account, with red alerts indicating high risk, yellow alerts indicating medium risk. And as I scroll through the view here, I can see what risk factors contributed to the overall risk. I can double click on a particular alert to get uh, a little bit more indication and contextual information about what happened. And now I can look at individual batch entries, for example. This one just happens to be a batch entry of one. And I see that the items that are underscored and underlined in red 
indicate uh, areas where there's uh, elevated risk. In other words, uh, these are not uh, consistent with typical usage by that particular account. So I can see here that they don't uh, this PP, PPD um, um, batch and transaction code 22 is unusual for them. When I select a different one, I can see a multi uh, a multi batch entry um, uh, batch, and again, I can see that there are uh, different indicators for risk. So I can have a conversation with my account, uh, perhaps a callback uh, uh, verification call that uh, I can have a very focused discussion with them. And based on that, then I can either accept this batch or reject this batch manually here. So if I select accept the batch, that will send a directive back to the payments hub saying that that should be routed out of the quarantine queue into the accepted uh, process uh, uh, queue. Otherwise, if I reject it, then it will be kicked back to the originator for um, uh, to, to let them know that they need to resubmit the batch. So in just a few minutes here, I've uh, quickly covered uh, quick forensics on a single batch. And uh, as you, one of the benefits that you'll see here is that the total number of batches to be investigated, it's, it's a very small amount compared to the total that they would have to uh, process. Uh, so rather than looking at 500 batches a day, I may be looking at five to 10 to 15 batches a day because uh, the behavioral analytics is really focusing my attention on the areas that have elevated risk. Now, uh, to summarize some of the benefits that the real-time ACH processing is providing for the financial institution is first of all the investigation time is cut dramatically instead of uh, spending time looking at batches that are consistent with uh, account behavior uh, you are you can focus the attention really where it needs to be focused on, on the areas where uh, something is not right it's not consistent with what we've seen uh, based on uh, customer history before your resource utilization is greatly improved so you can take and do more with the same amount of staff you can also uh, uh, utilize your staff uh, more intelligently. For example, you can put uh, broad analysts on other rails um, that, uh, uh, that you may need to investigate, for instance, uh, call center fraud, wire fraud, uh, online banking fraud, and so forth. Uh, if you are looking at, um, at every batch, just going through and doing a manual inspection on, on batches, or if you're relying on rules, you may have uh, increased missed fraud because uh, uh, rules have been notoriously famous for producing false positives. Typically one to two to five to 10 rules doesn't get the job done. Uh, we see in some cases banks have hundreds of rules and it becomes a, a full-time chore to try to maintain these rules and, and also to try to anticipate how a fraudster would behave. So with behavioral analytics, we're basically looking at statistical probabilities of fraud and really raising the attention on where the uh, transaction or the batch is inconsistent with prior history and behaviors. And uh, we're also looking at, at the transaction from originator all the way to beneficiary and looking at the trust at both ends of the transaction. So uh, the possibility of missed fraud is greatly reduced. And then your processing speed and capacity are greatly increased with this because you can take on more business without incurring necessarily more risk. So um, we also wanted to uh, kind of make you aware of our Guardian Analytics platform. Uh, we have a training that will take a, a user through and teach them the basics of investigation and forensics using our tool. And then we have more advanced classes that teach best practices on how to identify and how to organize your time uh, to uh, look at uh, uh, elevated risk and how you should organize the work uh, to get the highest yield out of your uh, investment. And then finally, I wanted to also draw your attention to uh, different resources that we have available for our real-time ACH solution. So you can go to our website at uh, www.guardianalytics.com and you can download uh, uh, product data sheets. Uh, you can uh, look at other resources there. We have links to uh, 
uh, videos that will take you through the demo, uh, very similar to what I just showed you. Uh, and then uh, if you have additional questions, uh, please contact us and, and uh, you know, visit our website or you can send an uh, email to us and we will be uh, more than happy to answer those questions. And at this point, I think what we're going to do is we're going to open it up uh, for questions. And I think we already have some that have come in from the audience. We do. Yeah, so um, so one question that came in um, asks, if I'm already an ACH customer, can I use this? Yes, absolutely. So um, this is designed uh, to layer on, on top of the existing application. Uh, so uh, essentially the process by which you generate NACHA files and then we receive those files uh, is essentially the same. Uh, the main difference is in the sending back of the scores and how those files are then split in order to, uh, you know, if you have an aggregate uh, file, they'll be split in order to uh, send the low risk ones to the accepted queue and the uh, high risk ones to the rejected queue and uh, we can give you uh, more detail on that uh, in a white paper and uh, uh, a technical bulletin that we have that describes it in, in, in detail. Okay. Um, is there a difference between an SI that is processing ACH on premise with their own data center versus an SI processing ACH through a third party vendor? Yeah. So. Um, what we have seen is that you know when you when you are hosting your own payments hub uh, on premise, uh, it's easier because uh, you have full control and custody of the files. So you have more control of uh, how those files are routed, where they can be stored temporarily, and how they're kind of marshaled in into, uh, for instance, into your core or sent to a rejected uh, location. Uh, that's not to say that it won't work with a uh, hosted solution, but in the hosted solutions, then we typically have to work with the hosting vendor to set up that file management and file routing uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, so uh, it's designed to work with both. I would say that it's probably a little bit easier with uh, an on-premise deployment than with a hosted deployment, but uh, contact us uh, for both, because depending on your particular uh, platform, uh, we may be able to accommodate uh, uh, the hosted solution with uh, minimal work. Okay. Um, can I use both uh, ACH real-time ODFI and real-time RDFI? Yes, absolutely. You can leverage the same file transfer and, and uh, scoring infrastructure for both solutions, so if you deploy them in parallel. Some organizations do um, um, operationalize those a little bit differently. So it depends on, on your practices, on how you go about um, uh, assigning work to the various um, uh, broad analysts on your staff and how you prioritize the work, you know, whether it's done uh, on the basis of originated transactions first and then received, or if you do both, or if you organize it by customer, you know, large customer, medium customer, small customer. So. Uh, uh, absolutely, you can run both in parallel. Okay. Um, and then what's the fastest file frequency the solution supports? The solution is really uh, designed and orchestrated to uh, do continuous file processing in real time. So we will get the file uh, and process it immediately upon receipt. Even a very large file, for instance, let's say that you have a payroll file that consists of thousands of batch entries. We can, uh, you know, break up those files into multiple chunks and run uh, processing in parallel on those files and score them in very uh, minimal amount of time. Uh, and also, we're processing multiple files at the same time. So, you know, if the customer has hundreds of files, we're pulling them on a continuous basis. It's uh, basically round-the-clock processing, and uh, so uh, each thread in our processing engine can. Uh, uh, process a separate file, and if the file is big enough, we even have multiple threads on the same file. So it's it's uh, really architected for high scalability and for very large uh, originators. We have uh, some originators that are doing many millions of transactions per year, 
you know, on the order of, you know, over 30 million to 40 million transactions per year. And so uh, the system is able to scale very dynamically uh, to those. And then we have seen that during various times of the day, there are peaks of uh, uh, volume. And again, the system is, it's got elasticity designed into it so that it can adapt to those uh, peak demand times. Okay, let's see. So, um, let's see. Uh, for Guardian to log into our system and monitor files, what connection is needed? We are JHA Outlink. Will that require JConnect? So, typically, uh, this uh, this particular solution is structured towards uh, Nacha files, and we did that um, on purpose to ensure the highest level of integration uh, and uh, because uh, lots of lots of uh, solutions out there can produce uh, the NACHA files. Uh, JConnect is typically uh, an API driven solution and we do we do offer uh, API processing for for uh, ACH in the context of our enterprise API. Uh, however this, this particular solution is geared towards uh, NACHA file processing so even if uh, uh, you know, if you're on uh, Jack Henry Outlink, uh, if we can, if you can send us the files, yes, we can uh, work with those. Uh, we do not uh, require a J, J Connect uh, connector for, for this. Um, okay, let's see the next one. If Guardian identifies a fraudulent ACH at one bank, will that info be considered for other banks? For example. If a fraud ACH is being sent to a particular receiver, are any other ACHs being sent to that receiver being flagged regardless of who is originating the ACH? Uh, excellent question. So we do a, a couple of different things. Um, for example, we, we maintain statistics both on originators and uh, in recipients uh, and build trust on each one depending on the usage pattern of which. Now, typically, it does not, that is done on a single organization basis. So we don't blend your data with anyone else's data. Uh, for example, in, within the population of your originators and beneficiaries, uh, what we will do is uh, we will keep uh, stats on both. Uh, uh, and we'll look at things like, uh, has this originator ever sent to this beneficiary before? Has that beneficiary ever received uh, payments from other originators are your organization before? Is there a change in velocity in the cadence and frequency of uh, transactions going to that particular beneficiary? Um, so one of the things that builds trust in a beneficiary is, for example, if there are multiple people over time sending to a beneficiary because if one of the originators have been victimized, then the chances are that they would have complained to the uh, financial organization. Uh, within a 72 to, you know, hour uh, period, uh, you know, or less than a week. Uh, so uh, that tends to build trust in beneficiaries. Uh, we also have certain algorithms. For example, we look at uh, uh, the class of originator. If it's a title or escrow company uh, that sends to uh, very large payments to one-time beneficiaries that, that may never do it before, uh, we look to see if that's a typical pattern of behavior for that uh, particular uh, organization, uh, that particular originator. So all of those stats are maintained at the institution level. Now, having said that, <laughs> we, uh, we also have a, another module called integrated threat data. And what that does is that is a cross-institutional uh, source of information that is uh, curated by us, by Guardian Analytics. And the data from there comes from multiple sources. Uh, one of the sources can be law enforcement um, and uh, you know, government sources, industry sources. So for example, Confirm Mules, uh, uh, those are organizations that have been reported, uh, or, or entities that have been reported as participating in financial crimes uh, at other institutions. It could be uh, as a result of our own investigations uh, carried on by our own uh, analysts. We have a managed service called Fraud Desk that we offer to institutions that want to subscribe to that, where our own analysts will triage the alerts on your behalf and then open cases and make you aware of the ones where there's elevated risk. 
Uh, so in, in some of those cases when there's confirmed risk and it's been vetted uh, and we're not violating any privacy uh, constraints, uh, PII data or anything like that, then that information goes into uh, the integrated risk data uh, module and particularly if it's uh, authorized by the, the victim organization. Uh, now, uh, the integrated risk data can also be sourced by you so you can provide information on confirmed fraud that you have had, in that case, is only matched to, to your organization. So, so there is some level of cross-institutional analysis, but we typically, uh, we have a strict policy of maintaining uh, data uh, segregated by institution so that we don't blend uh, data across institutions. Only when it's uh, a public uh, source of information like law enforcement or uh, uh, industry sources, government sources, uh, then we can do uh, cross-institutional match. Uh, so just a quick reminder, um, everyone will receive um, a link to a recording of the presentation as well as the slide deck, so um, probably a, um, in the next day or two. Okay. The next question is, we use five serves wire exchange product, uh, will this new feature work with this product for same day ACH? Um, yes and no. <laughs> uh, let, me, uh, let me explain. Um, so we have a product today called uh, Guardian Analytics Wire that works with Wire Exchange and it's, it works with real-time API from Wire Exchange so we get the wires in real time and synchronously we respond back to uh, Wire Exchange and they do the uh, quarantining uh, internally within Wire Exchange and then again you can have a similar uh, fraud analyst experience where you can release uh, or hold wires uh, from our user interface and those directors are sent to wire exchange. Now this particular uh, real-time ACH product is geared towards working with a different data stream, it's primarily NACHA files. Uh, however, having said that, uh, we recently announced our omni-channel solution which will allow you to join data in one consolidated view from multiple channels. So the answer is yes if you use our omnichannel visual analytics. In that case, what we will do is we'll have two different risk engines working in the background, one consuming wires from wire exchange, one consuming NACHA files from your uh, ACH uh, platform. And then in one view, in one consolidated screen, you will see both sets of alerts side by side. Uh, so you can see whether elevated risk in one area is raising uh, the possibility of fraud in another area. We've already seen that that's a common uh, fraudster tactic. Sometimes they'll compromise one channel, but then use that vulnerability to uh, commit crime in a separate channel. Okay. The next one, um, I think we answered this one. If we already use FraudMap ACH, will FraudMap ACH uh, RDF, uh, excuse me, um, real time replace that? Uh, the answer is it's up to you. So uh, it's uh, it it is a separate product. Uh, so so you can uh, you can use this solution. Uh, you can upgrade to this solution, or you can continue using the the standard product today. Okay. Next one. Uh, when you talk about auto payments due to low risk. Will Guardian Analytics auto send those payments or will the bank still have to approve that ACH to get the ACH sent out? Yeah, we, we uh, that's an excellent question. We are not an inline solution. We, we get a copy of the NACHA files. We don't get the authority copy of the NACHA files. So the authority and custody of the files always remains with the bank or with the hosting provider. We get a copy. We use that copy in order to execute our analysis and then we send you back a response containing uh, recommendations and uh, basically the risk score, the risk level, and whether it should be held or released, um, et cetera. Uh, so uh, if it's held, it will require uh, you to do one of two things. You can either release it manually from our user interface, in which case we'll send that directive back on the next uh, response file, or you can simply uh, uh, take that action on your side using the user interface for your ACH uh, platform. But typically the recommended practice is that you do it in one place, that way 
if you're opening up cases or uh, entering comments and annotations on an alert, you have a single repository of uh, information to see what uh, actions were taken on a particular batch. And by the way, uh, again, I want to reiterate that if, uh, if I didn't, if you feel like um, um, you need additional information or uh, clarification on some of these answers, uh, please by all means send us uh, uh, an email and we'll be happy to go into more detail on those. Uh, the next one is how fast can this be implemented since we already have uh, the Broadmap Broaddesk ACH product. Uh, this is intended to be a, a fast deployment. So uh, typically uh, the one beauty about this is that we don't have to come up with a different risk model. In other words, if you're already using uh, our ACH product, that means uh, we already have a pretty good knowledge uh, and intimate knowledge of your originators and beneficiaries. We don't have to baseline the model uh, from scratch. So, so basically the delta is in putting in the infrastructure for the, uh, the routing and the file management. So that could be uh, a process of you know, four to six weeks. Uh, it could be longer, particularly if you have a, a, a very complex uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, environment at your organization, but, but typically it should be measured on, on the order of, uh, of weeks, not a huge uh, cumbersome in, in, uh, deployment. Uh, what is the additional cost? Excellent question. I'm going to rely on my colleagues in the sales department to uh, respond to those questions and they'll be happy to have that conversation with you. Uh, uh, question about the slideshow, yes, we'll definitely send out a copy of the slides and uh, send us email to get a copy of the technical bulletin and white paper. What kind of time delay is there from the time the file is sent to you and received back from processing? Uh, well, that, that depends on the configured interval. Uh, so typically we recommend, you know, between five and 15 minutes. Uh, it can be even shorter. But most of the time, uh, we have found that to be more than sufficient when it comes to ACH. Uh, so you know, it can be uh, as little as every five minutes. Uh, we actually score the files immediately upon receipt. And the delta, the latency of uh, file receipt to risk score being generated is, is actually uh, typically you know, in one or two minutes, depending on the size of the file. Even files with uh, you know, over 10,000, 15,000 batch entries because of the parallel processing that we do on those files. Oops. Uh, how would Guardian Analytics be able to prevent ACH fraud pertaining to credit card payments? For example, customer makes ACH payment from closed account but withdraws available funds by cash advance before the ACH payment is returned. What I'd like to do is, I'd, I'd like to get, uh, please contact us um, directly. I wanna get a little more clarity on that and ask some questions about it before I fire off an answer, but I would be happy to have that conversation with you. Next question is, uh, we'll just take a couple more questions and then the rest we will respond to uh, offline. We use Pfizer ACI SSB today with Guardian ACH module. Can we purchase a solution through Guardian or, or from Pfizer ACI? Uh, this particular solution uh, today is, is sold directly from Guardian Analytics. Um, so, uh, you know, please contact our sales folks for this. Next question, as an RDFI, if we identify a high risk, your model shows that it gets rejected back to the payment network, what return reasons would be acceptable? I was unaware that an RDFI could reject the batch because it was deemed to be high risk. Um, so that is a good question. In terms of um, regulatory requirements, I am not sure what the answer is, but let me give you the particular use case. If, if there's evidence that a received transaction is being used for a nefarious scheme, 
for example, funds consolidation and appears to be uh, evidence of mule activity if uh, all of a sudden uh, multiple uh, credits are coming into an account where uh, it's an unusually fast uh, uh, type of uh, change uh, before the account would receive funds uh, from one or two originators, let's say every two or three days, and now it's receiving uh, funds from you know 50 originators over the space of two hours. That that the fiduciary responsibility on the part of the receiving organization is to contact the the originator and to uh, start an investigation. That is a suspicious activity under, and I don't think there's any uh, bank examiner that would have a problem with the institution taking some mitigation mitigating actions because uh, that is that is something suspicious activity. That, that should be investigated, and probably a SAR report would result from that. Uh, so um, I am not a lawyer, so I cannot speak to uh, you know whether that you can or cannot reject the incoming transaction. But I would certainly, as a as a uh, person involved in, a, in the fraud analysis industry, uh, I would say that you you should investigate those, and and you should take preventive action. Uh, to make sure that your accounts are not being misused, because if you fail to do that, you can certainly uh, bet that the uh, <laughs> that the bank examiners will be asking, "Well, why didn't you do something about this when you knew this activity was going on?" All right, we'll take one more question here, and then we'll we promise to respond to the rest offline. What ACH processing systems integrate with GA today? Um, well, again, uh, because we deal with uh, not just formatted files, it can be any system that is capable of generating a file in the proper NACHA format. Today we have a whole variety of different platforms uh, that we use uh, from Fiserv, FIS, Jack Henry, uh, you name it. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really uh, what we do is we, we make sure that the files are properly formatted and that they adhere to NACHA, uh, uh, you know, requirements. And so, uh, if if the platform can provide a, a properly formatted file, then it should be fine. Uh, one question that came up. Okay, I'll, we'll take one more question. <laughs> can your solution detect so-called CEO fraud where the customer submits uh, of the bank a valid payment to be processed? But they were fooled by someone that was not the CEO. Yeah, I think uh, you're referring to the uh, so-called business email compromise, our BEC fraud, basically where a company executive is socially engineered uh, into uh, initiating a transaction uh, by the fraudster masquerading as another executive within the company. So the, uh, the, the fraudster may uh, pretend to be uh, a CEO uh, traveling and sends a an email or a, a directive to uh, say the CFO saying uh, please uh, send this transaction in order to consummate a business deal. Uh, and uh, the answer is that we have had a huge success in detecting this type of uh, fraud in our wire product and what our customers are telling us that now there appears to be a migration of some of this from the wire domain into ACH so there's a little bit of bleed over right now. And uh, uh, we don't have specific cases where we can definitively say that this particular ACH fraud occurred or resulted from BEC fraud. However, uh, the trend appears to uh, be starting in that in that direction. And the good news is here is that our algorithms are somewhat agnostic to the method of of, of, of uh, origination. They're simply looking at statistical variances in uh, a number of different uh, variables, and we look at over a hundred different parameters uh, that indicate uh, originator or beneficiary uh, behavior and changes in those patterns. And so we, you know, uh, when that behavior starts to drift out of normal, we elevate the risk accordingly. So. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, and that's part of the reason why we've had such a success in our wire product. We're anticipating the same level of success in the ACH product because it's using similar algorithms but with a different data domain. Uh, so uh, I hope that answers that question. 
And uh, I would like to thank everyone for your participation and uh, your attendance. Uh, please let us know uh, if uh, you know if your questions were answered uh, satisfactorily. And for those that we couldn't get to, uh, what we will do is uh, we'll reach out to you via email and uh, and respond to your additional questions. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Alexa. Thank you. Thanks, Luis, for a wonderful presentation, and thank you all for joining today. Um, as mentioned, you will receive a copy of the presentation, both the recording and the slides. And um, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to us, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks.